Tony here? He did no. come in here. He did? He did not. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, One of the few coaches in the league I can post up. Pro probably not the basketball clinic you would have liked for the 1200 foot, but um, I mean, getting it, obviously, it's, it's pretty impressive. It's, um, you know, it, it kind of takes me back to, you know, some of the games we played in, uh, uh, in the mid 80s. Um, you know, they were all 60 something. And, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of points being scored. It was hard to generate any offense. And um, so, yeah, it was, it's like uh, old time again. Um, but, you know, some games the ball just doesn't, um, doesn't, doesn't, find, doesn't find the basket and you have to find other ways to, to win. You've got to do some other things until it, until it turns. Um, and um, I, was, I was saying earlier, as far as the the wins are, are concerned, the, the when I uh, when I sat down before the game, um, I thought back to the first time we ever played in this building. Um, Might have been 1987 or something like that. I don't know, but it was a doubleheader with the men. I think that game was like at five, something like that, five or five thirty. I'm not even sure, but. Um, you know, you know, I, I can't imagine there were 50 people in the building, you can count the ushers and some parents that made the trip up. So that that part really kind of hit home with me that, you know, we went from that to this, and it's pretty, um, that, that's probably the most rewarding thing is that um, None of this, not only did none of this exist, none, this was never even remotely thought possible. And, um, uh, and it, 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 it's happened. And, you know, I, I don't think CD and I could be any more grateful for, for um, you know, for how it's turned out. Bye. Speaking of CD, what's it like to, you know, to achieve this accomplishment with her by your side throughout all of it? Yeah, <clears throat> you know, one of the things that I always, I always thought was, you, if you want to do great things, then you have to, you have to know what your, what your strengths and weaknesses are, what your limitations are, and how far you can. You know, you personally can take something at that point in time in your life. And uh, uh, I knew, you know, very, 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 very uh, early before we even played our first game or before I got the job that, um, that if, you know, she would agree to come here and, and coach with, um, with me and with us that, you know, we could we could be good. Obviously, nobody envisioned that it would be this. I don't know how you could, but um, that that decision I think made every other decision possible. I think had I gotten that one wrong, it would have been a whole lot of other wrong decisions going forward. So, um, by getting that one right, I think we set ourselves up for you know for something like this to. To occur, so not, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, just saying it to say it if I if I didn't acknowledge that um, if, if she wasn't a part of this, it probably would not have happened. And I can honestly say that. Do you know uh, one of the video montages tonight during a timeout was players being asked what they would tell their younger selves. Is, is there any wisdom you would impart on a 30-year-old version of you? Um, uh, they tell you, you know, they tell you when you have children that, that you're born, that they're, the way they're born, they're born a certain way, and they pretty much stay that way. I mean, they might be 
So, but you know, a three-year-old, when they're 33, they still have the same qualities, you know, you can, you can tell. So my 30-year-old as a coach, and me now at my age as a coach, there's too many similarities. I'm not crazy about them, but there's too many similarities where I still react knowing after 40 years, knowing that I can't change the outcome, I can't change what's happening, I can't change, and yet I still react as if I actually think I can. And, um, and I would have told myself back then, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of stuff that's gonna happen that you have no control over and you will not be able to change no matter how hard you try. Um, and you're just gonna have to accept it. And knowing the difference between what to accept and what to fight for, I think, um, um, I, I kind of always knew that, um, but um, and, 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 and in reality, it would be hard to have a conversation with me as a thirty-year-old because I, I I have a perspective now that I didn't have then, um, and it's funny wins don't wins don't. I think um, define who you are. You know, I've coached a lot of, against a lot of great coaches that were tremendous at their job, didn't win a whole lot of games. I don't want to say that wins define who you are, but um, I I fought hard for wins in the '80s and '90s, and and um, I find that we're still fighting that fight just as hard today. And, um, and that's, that's, that's a good feeling to have. Gino, to, to, to fight that and 1,200 wins in, to still have the same energy, is that probably the greatest success of it all? Because you, you seem like you're still as excited as you were, you know, back in the, you know, 85 when you went down the court. Um, yeah, a lot of things go go through your go through your mind about um, how hard you were trying to prove that you could win. You know, you could win some basketball games, and and you had to prove it. I, I, there, I, there was no nil deal for me back then. You know, where you get paid ahead of time for not doing anything. You you had to prove that you can do it. And it was never about so I could make more money. It was, I had to prove so I could do it. I had to prove it. And um, the, the challenge today is to prove that, not that you can do it, because I don't have to prove anything to anybody, except I gotta prove to myself that I still can do it. And that's probably the, that's a harder, that's a harder fight than the one that was back then, right now prove to yourself that you can still do it. Okay. <laughs> you know, the players have talked about it, you know, being important to them to help you kind of continue building a legacy of success. Does that, I know you said it doesn't mean a whole lot to you, but does it mean something to you that they care about it, about you know, continuing they, this program? They should. They should. It should mean an awful lot to them because they're the ones doing it. Um, I've always said that. I think it should mean a tremendous amount to any player that's ever played here to know that they had a hand in all this. And they actually did it, you know? Um, um, I, obviously, you remember every single player that ever played for you. Um, but what I want them to remember is this was, this is, this was my contribution to that. And some of them were here in the stands, that's home. And I, I want them to feel like part of that's mine. And that, I think, is what keeps bringing them back. You know, I got a big sense of that a couple weekends ago. You know, they all felt like this is part of, part of this is mine. And I'm glad they feel that way. <clears throat> Gino, you mentioned days when there was just 50 people in the building here. 
tonight in one little area alone, the, the area where you exit the court and fans can lean over, there had to be 50 or 100 like teenage girls, school-age <laughs> girls, uh, totally star starstruck by the sight of an Aaliyah or a Paige. What does it mean to you to have you know, that portion of the community kind of, you've captured their imagination over the years and um, you can see on nights like this or any night when you play yeah. downtown um, what it means. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's funny, women's, women's sports in general, but certainly women's basketball um, has reached a certain level of, of attention and appreciation that uh, certainly didn't exist back um, in the 80s. Um, and the more it, it, it's and men had to buy into it. That was the big thing. Men had to buy into it. Getting guys to buy into it was the, the, the big thing because women they still don't. They don't do a great job of supporting other women athletes or women sports in general. So you had to get the guys to buy in. And they wouldn't buy in in the beginning. Until all of a sudden, they all started having kids that wanted to play basketball because they saw their idols play on TV. So once that transformation happened, then it became what it, what it became. I think as dads, who would go, I don't really care about women's basketball. Well, all of a sudden they have a seven-year-old who really cares about whoever that kid is on our team. That's her, you know, her idol. Now all of a sudden they care. Now all of a sudden they come to games and they want to go, you know, to basketball camp. Now they want to play in high school. They want to play. Um, th those, are, those are the ancillary things that happen when you're just thinking we're just here to win games, but actually you know, we we created a a subculture that didn't exist, and that it, it didn't it wasn't there. And through a lot of hard work and a lot of people putting a lot of hard, hard work into it, um, and, and a culture was born out of out of nothing. And it's not like it was a sleeping giant just waiting to be woken. No, it was a broke hill. And there was nothing, less than nothing. And the people that were here in the beginning deserve a lot of credit for that. Um, you know, that beginning of that, that transformation. You know. And when you look around, you know, like if it didn't happen last week, I, you know, you've heard me say this, like in today's world, if it didn't happen last week, it didn't happen. So anything that happened three weeks ago or two months ago or five years ago, it never happened. That's a rumor, you know? Um, but in order for us to appreciate what it is that we have today, we have to really remember what was here, who was here 20, 25, 30, 35 years ago. Because without appreciating them, you can't appreciate this. Anything else? Jim. Okay. Roger, can you wait for <clears throat> did, did CD or has CD just provided a, a great balance for you or a compliment to your strengths? How, how was she so important? Um, I think anytime two people work together, there always has to be a... Um, um, a mesh of things that, that fit together. For instance, uh, um, I have a lot of strengths that are the same as hers. And I have a lot of weaknesses that are the same as hers. And she has a lot of strengths that I don't have. And I have some strengths that she doesn't have. So we combine all those things and make, you know, make it work. I know uh, I know what I do, and I know what I'm good at, and I know what my input is, and she knows what hers is. Um, and a lot of times, you know, these things don't last very long because somebody gets the idea that 
you know, I, I want to do it on my own, or I don't like the way we're doing it. Yeah, we're successful, but I'm not happy. Very rarely does it work to this level, to this extent. So, um, if she had gotten, you know, if she had taken a couple of the opportunities that came her way, you know, it may, it may have, may have been very, very difficult to, not that it, like it, you know, couldn't be done, but it would have been very, very difficult. Um, so the fact that, that that continuity for so long, I think it gives a little bit of stability to the kids that come in. There's a, you know, there's a continuation of the same things that those young guys learned in 86, 87, 88. You know, um, Megan and Debbie that are doing TV or, or radio or what Kara's doing, you know, SNY. Those people will look back and they see CD as the, you know, every every great organization has that one person that's the storyteller, the the the, the, the person in charge of the the, the culture, the, the legacy. They they. They pass it along to everybody else, and um, they don't like it while it's happening while they're here. But um, to use Sue Bird's favorite quote, whenever she would pitch a moan about how hard or how awful it was to be here in college, you know, and what I put her through, blah 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 blah. blah. And I said, "Yeah, it doesn't have to be the worst four years of your life. I can't imagine that." I don't even know how you survived those four years, you know, being everybody's idol, winning national championships. I said it must have been just torture for you to go through that up at stores, you know, be idolized as the greatest point guard ever, and blah, 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 blah. And she said, I just have two words to describe my four years at Connecticut. That will explain what I mean. I said, what are they? She goes, pantyhose. Because whenever we went out to dinner, CB made them dress up and they had to wear pantyhose. <laughs> so to this day, they remember shit like that. <laughs> they used to say, what's your strength? Well, I could never get my players to wear pantyhose. <laughs> I would have to do a Joe Namath pantyhose commercial. There was, they don't know what you're talking about. But they about. don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and, yeah. So, you know, there's things that, you know, that happen in your program that live on forever because those things are never, you're never allowed to forget them. You know, you're never allowed to forget them. It's, uh, you know, it's like how many, how many, I, I never got the opportunity, but how many people are fortunate enough to know both their grandparents for a long, long time? For a long, long time. You know, that you know your grandparents for a long time on both sides, your mom and dad. It's a whole different level of stuff, and I never got to see that part of it, but my kids have, my grandkids have. So it's just a way of passing things down that you just don't ever let it kind of fend for itself. You have to nurture it every single day. Or it can't ever last this long. Maggie, and then we'll finish up with John. Obviously, Sunday's game will be a lot different in these past few. <laughs> really? how, have you, how have you just liked your team's response to that game loss these past couple weeks? Um, well, if you talk about what are some of the experiences that we've had, um, put games like this weekend in perspective, um, for about 30 years now, I don't think there's been a year goes by where we're not playing in something like the game of the century. And this year we're not. Like, they're number one, but we're not number 1A or number two. So there were a lot of times when, you know, we would go down, and, this is a re re relatively young rivalry that we have with South Carolina. And in the beginning, you know, we go down there and we blow them out. And it wasn't a rivalry. It was, 
nothing. And then it became one because both people have to win in order for it to be a rivalry. And you, you start to appreciate that when you have the best team, you can go down there, and not just there, could go anywhere, really, and play a team of, a, of that magnitude and know you're gonna win. And then there's some years you know that it's gonna be a titanic struggle and the chances of, of winning are not as great as when you think you have the best team in the country. So, you know, everything's in, everything is, is in perspective going down to play. Um, I think we know what we're up against. We know who they are they, and what they can do and what they've done. Um, and um, I know our guys are excited to go down and play, for sure. For sure. You know. And the NCAA tournament is going to start in a month and a half, or maybe just exactly a month, maybe right after our tournament. The NCAA tournament is going to start in a month. And um, unless they lose, nobody's really going to remember that we, you know, we went down there and played, and when those seedings come out, that's all that matters at that point. Who are you playing next? You know, to join the company you joined, one of three to get to that number. Um, what, does that mean anything to you? And you, you have a chance to kind of you know keep going and maybe grab it all to yourself one day. Um, do you think about that? How many more hundred do you have? In, do you think? I, I, I would. I would think more along <clears throat> along the lines of single digits, not hundreds. <laughs> you know, uh, this isn't a casino ATM. You know, where you just spit out hundreds. <laughs> I, it's um, it's been my it's been my philosophy uh, since the beginning that um, there isn't a number that that um, that I'm searching for, that I'm trying to reach, that I'm, you know, uh, the, there is no, there is no whale that I'm chasing, you know, and obsessed over. Um, when it's over, it's over, and whatever the number is at that time, that's what the number is going to be. And if, um, you know, if. If it's a lot, it's a lot. If it's where it is right now, it's still a lot. So um, I could probably say with a great deal of certainty that um, I'll, I'll never be number one in wins. I don't, I don't think that would happen. And I'm still going to. Enjoy my wine and I'm going to sleep good tonight. Mm -hmm.